Uh, what you're looking at here is called the Micro Leap. Uh, LEAP is an acronym. Every good military program has to have an acronym. And uh, LEAP stands for Long Endurance Autonomous Powered Paraglider. And we developed the LEAP in three stages. The Micro Leap, the one in the middle which is called the Insect, and then we went up to the Full Leap, uh, which is a 55-hour ISR platform. This uh, has basically four sections. Um, this flies an elliptical high-performance high elliptical parafoil wing, which is in this bag right up here. There's a propulsion system back here, consisting of a gasoline motor in this case, um, guidance, navigation, and control inside the main body, and then you can see uh, this is a dummy payload on the front of the unit here. Um, this would typically carry a camera payload or some, you know, whatever payload uh, you want to carry with the, uh, the device. Um, modes of operation, this one can be airdropped. You can basically kick this out of an airplane uh, and it'll deploy its wing in parachute fashion, start its motor and, and uh, start going around doing what you've told it to do. You can also ground launch this by deploying the wing to the rear of the craft, starting the motor. You just pick up the wing and it, it flies off, takes off. Um, mission planning is done with our base station software. You basically set your, uh, your uh, waypoints and your linger times. Uh, you program it all in using our base station software and the machine takes care of the rest. It goes where you wanted it to go, does what you want it to do, and then uh, it'll return to base for you. This was stage one of three and ultimately we ended up on our full leap uh, with a Delta Hawk diesel engine. The reason we went with a diesel engine is because the Army wants to go to one fuel, a heavy fuel, so they asked us to produce this in a uh, diesel uh, fashion. So we went to Delta Hawk, and Delta Hawk was producing uh, diesel engines for small aircraft. And uh, we got their engine, we worked with their engineers to modify it, and it turned out to be a very successful uh, venture between Delta Hawk and Atair. The Micro Leap is designed to fly up to five hours. It's designed to carry up to a 75 pound payload. Uh, as Gio alluded to, that could be a optics device, a chemical weapon sensing device, or it could even drop something like an unintended ground sensor or a small munition. We're even working with iRobot uh, to be able to put their packbot straps very well right underneath here to be able to drop their robot, uh, release it at a certain altitude where the robot would be able to survive. The Micro Leap then would gain altitude, serve as a communications relay platform and an optics device uh, would be able to give them a, an idea of what the area of operations looks like where the robot's being operated. So up to five hours depending on what your payload is. And then working up to the full leap which is a 55 hour payload, or 55 hour uh, endurance. This carries a TEARS integrated navigation and control computer. It's a uh, small Linux based system. Uh, it carries our own inertial measurement unit and navigation filtering uh, and, uh, excuse me, guidance filtering and navigation algorithms on board. Um, it carries an 802.11 wireless interface, carries an 802.11 wireless interface and has a high power analog CDMA uh, 900 megahertz wireless interface to be able to um, communicate with the ground station during flight. The concept of flying a parafoil, as any uh, parachutist will know, is you, you have a uh, ram air inflated wing structure and uh, you have a set of, of guy lines going to the wing and then you have two sets of brake lines which basically act as more or less like ailerons on a normal wing that you would, that you would find. Uh, they can't go up but basically you can put the brakes on on one side or brakes on on the other side. So if you'll look up here you'll see two static line harnesses here and there and then you see the two yellow cables actually control the brake lines on the parafoil for the uh, navigation and steering. Now, altitude control is done basically by throttling the motor. Uh, parafoil has the property that the higher the airspeed, the higher the lift, so you, uh, you bump up the forward power and you get more lift and up you go. Take the power down, down you go. This is fully autonomous once you send it on the mission. So what you do is you have our base station software running on your laptop, you can do it at the ground, you can do it in the airplane that you're dropping from, whatever you want, but basically you, you set a set of waypoints, GPS coordinates and heights, and you set linger times and you tell it what order you want it to uh, proceed, and that basically gets downloaded into the flight control computer here, and uh, so then when you deploy the vehicle, it'll fly to the first waypoint autonomously, uh, it'll linger for the, the desired period of time, it flies to the next waypoint, 
lingers, et cetera, et cetera. And it'll return to base or return to whatever waypoint you, uh, you wish. Sometimes you have a soldier that might want to carry this into the field and have a very lightweight and uh, durable uh, method of doing bomb damage assessment. And so we could use, we could do, it, do an RC version of it. Good thing about the RC version as well is it's easy to train a soldier. We can do that in about a day. It's a very easy uh, system to be able to fly. The swarming algorithms could probably be implemented on the LEAP program, but they were specifically designed for our Onyx system. Uh, the idea was that with the precision airdrop systems that we have, that you would uh, want to deploy uh, mass amounts of these up to 500 in the same airspace at a time. You've probably seen videos of a C-17 or a C-130 flying over an area of operations and dropping a lot of cargo. And there's statistics that show that a lot of that collides. Uh, sometimes you can lose up to 50% of your cargo just because of collisions. Well, in order to make precision airdrop a practical method of airdrop, we wanted to be able to show the Army wanted us to be able to show through our SBI, our Phase 2 uh, proposal and contract, that we could send these systems out and they wouldn't collide in midair. So we developed flocking, swarming, and collision, avoiding, collision avoidance algorithms. Uh, these systems actually communicate with each other as they're transitioning through the air. And if they feel like they're going to collide, uh, they make an evasive maneuver. But as soon as they're clear, they, they track back onto the pre-programmed GPS target they can land on one target or individually programmed targets, whatever we put into the mission planning. Uh, but it's a very strong possibility that we would deploy multiple micro leaps in the same airspace. So taking that flight code from the micro, from the uh, leap, I'm sorry, from the Onyx program, and incorporating that onto the leap program. I'm not sure if that would be. Um, it, I'm sure it'd be very feasible, right? Yeah, it shouldn't be difficult. Yeah, that should not be difficult. We haven't done that yet, but this does carry the uh, the 900 megahertz radio that allows us both the ground station uh, communication and the ship to ship communication. If you wanted to deploy multiple ones of these in the same airspace, this is our Onyx system. The Onyx system was one of the first major uh, contracts that we had with the Army. This was produced through an SBIR Phase One and Two contract uh, through Natick Soldier Center. Uh, the Onyx system is part of what's called the JPADS program, the Joint Precision Airdrop System. Uh, JPADS is basically a system that's been designed to get high dollar assets, the C-130s, the C-17s, above the 25,000 foot threshold to be able to do precision airdrop. Uh, you're putting the air crews and the high dollar uh, aircraft in harm's way when they're coming in for a 1,500 foot uh, payload drop and do what's traditionally known as dumb airdrop. It's an unguided airdrop system. Uh, in order to be able to get any kind of accuracy and, and dropping payload to soldiers on the ground. So what JPADS does is uh, you can deploy these systems out of into aircraft at between 25 and 35,000 feet. These systems transition to the target, They're designed to land within 50 feet of the soldier or within 50 feet of the pre-programmed target that they've given. Uh, what you see here is a 500 pound system. It's designed to deploy cargo from zero to 500 pounds. Atera has also produced a 20 pound system, so this is from zero to 20 pounds. And then we also have a one ton system designed to deploy basically a pallet of fuel, water, ammunition, supplies, anything that's mission critical for the soldier on the ground. This also does something else for the soldier. It, it decreases the military's dependence on supply convoys. Uh, supply convoys are very vulnerable to IEDs, improvised explosive devices. So we're delivering precision cargo to them. They know where the cargo is. They don't have to spread out amongst the, on the drop zone to go look for the cargo. And we can do this 24 hours a day under the cover of night or uh, during the day. So uh, what we're attached to here is, uh, is an experiment we did, demonstration for the military that uh, we're talking to various sources about. Uh, iRobot wanted to be able to show precision insertion of their robots. Right now, a robot has to either be driven in to an area of operations or carried by a soldier. So we wanted to be able to show that we could deploy robots using precision airdrop systems, uh, drop them in on the soldier. The soldier calls in his coordinates. Uh, he has the command module with him in his backpack. That's all he's having to carry. Uh, we drop the robot in, and that allows them to operate the robot.